Hey, book club. Okay, I'm gonna try something a little different today. Like a, like a vlog, like a reading vlog. And as you guys know, if you watch my channel, I record on my phone. And so I have my backup really, really old iPhone that I will start listening to For the Emperor by Sandy Mitchell. Got uh, some breakfast to make, some coffee to drink, some laundry to fold, and uh, a book to listen to. Caiaphas King, For the Emperor. All right, let's go. So I've just finished the prologue and I guess that was the editor and she fits into the overall 40K world, but because I don't know what that world is, that means nothing to me. So I don't know, was that a good intro for fans? Let me know. But standing in that mess room, a heartbeat away from being ripped apart by mutinous guardsmen was a unique experience. And one that I have no wish Repeat. That was so weird. The girl from the opening, the editor of these memoirs, just butted in <laughs> to his story to make a correction. That's such an interesting way to tell this story. I have never read a book like this before. So I'm about an hour in and initially I thought it was like, I really didn't like the intro and I still don't love it, but I definitely understand it way more and I, I can understand the necessity for it. Uh, but it's so interesting because initially I thought, okay, so this person is editing what was in the memoir and uh, so we're gonna get like a more, uh, a less bias version of what Kane's experience was. And there was just a line. <laughs> so she's an inquisitor, I guess. But he, in his memoir, said something about the inquisitor squad people being resentful when other people use their tactics. And she chimes in like very imperiously, like we are above such things. <laughs> And I feel like it gives such an interesting view of the world and the characters that, that she's editing him and putting in some facts, but also that like those are facts to her. So just the idea that there is no real unbiased opinion. And that's true for all things, but it's really, it's done very well. It's very, it's, I like it a lot. And it's funny. <laughs> I am a little under, I'm four hours in. I have five hours left. <laughs> and, yo, Kane is such a schmuck. He's just like manipulating everybody and he's pretending to be this thing that he's not. And, like, it, he's just a schmuck. And it's so funny. <laughs> Okay, let me catch you up on a few things because I'm still getting the hang of this whole reading vlog thing where I'm supposed to tell you the story as it's going on. Basically, this book is following the memoirs of a commissar, some high-ranking military dude in the Imperial Army people thing. I don't know. He's a hero and everybody loves him and he's uh, kind of a schmuck. But the start of the story, it's actually pretty interesting. So he is taking command or some form of leadership over these two different units or groups. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Anyways, one was all men, one was all women, and they're being merged together. And at the beginning of the novel, there's this huge fight. He thinks that just shooting these people, these perpetrators of this whatever fight thing will be bad for morale, which he's probably right. So instead he gives these five people who they find responsible for this, the option, not really an option, but basically he says that like, you guys are gonna get to die in battle. We're gonna wait until there's a horrible thing or or some suicidal mission thing and you guys are gonna die an honorable death there instead of me just shooting you in the head right now. Then he does other, I don't know, leader things and ends up at some fancy parties. And at this fancy party, there's this singer lady and she's so pretty and she's such a good singer and they're flirt, flirt, flirting and then Boom! The ambassador of these alien people, one of the, he, he gets shot. An ambassador gets shot. And there's a super sketchy person at the party as well and he thinks that this sketchy person is maybe an inquisitor. And then he has some mission something, he's trying to keep himself alive, and then <laughs> the singer girl's an inquisitor lady, Kay. <laughs> She's also the one editing his book. <laughs> I kind of wonder where the story's going. So I read this without um, reading the synopsis. I just like listened to the intro. I really liked it. So I downloaded it. I didn't even read the synopsis or anything because I didn't want to get turned off by maybe like being overwhelmed by information. You know, I just wanted to go in blind. I like the character. I'll listen. And now I'm really curious because he's old. He, he said that at one point he said he's well into his second century. I was just at a part where he said her and this inquisitor 
singer girl like get into trouble or whatever for the next few decades. I know this is a series. I'm very curious at, at where this book will, will leave off. I don't know if I'll read the next one, but I would definitely read spoilers for the next one. Amber Lee is very interesting in that in the beginning of the novel, she was like, before we knew that she was a character in the story, she was giving information and it seemed quite factual, but now it's like all opinion and anecdotal and changing the story. So far, our main characters are Kane, Amberly, and like, I guess kind of Jurgen, who's Kane's assistant, who's just like really smelly. Like, he just talks about how smelly his bro is all the time. I do not like Amberly. I don't like Amberly at all. This is, ugh. Basically, so I'm gonna, I want to re-listen to the intro. I want to re-listen to the part where she's saying basically what her job is because I think I missed something there and I honestly have no idea what she said in the prologue because I was so eager to get to the part that I had heard in the preview. But she's now, like, she has moved from making comments on the situation, on things that were happening elsewhere, on fact-checking, and is now, like, inserting her opinion into situations. And I don't like it. And I don't like her. I definitely did not listen to the beginning. It was an editorial note and actually like made a lot of sense when I listened to it a second time. She literally told me everything she was going to do. She told me she was going to interrupt your story. She told me she was going to add things. She told me that she was going to put in excerpts from other things to contextualize some of the stuff that Kane was saying. And she told me her name and that she was an inquisitor and I just wasn't listening <laughs> or didn't process the information. So I totally missed that part. But I think oddly it added to the story for me because I got a really big kick out of being surprised by those things. I like those kind of surprises and I think had I actually been paying attention to the intro I would have known that Amberly was the singer so it was kind of cool. I think that they should have had a third reader because it's actually quite cool how they're doing this. They're inputting this Inquisitor's voice in and that's a female narrator and then they have Caiaphas Kane's voice but he is also voicing the excerpts from other texts that Amberly is deciding to put in to Caiaphas's journal or whatever this is. Sometimes it, it's, I mean, I just really have to think real hard that this is not part of Caiaphas's history, that this is an external source. And I think it would have been cool if they had a third reader, probably a male reader or like a super androgynous voice as the reader for the extra texts that are going in to contextualize some of the events. But man, I like this. This is a cool story. I like it. There were actually three narrators, but the other one was for female inserts that Amberly was deciding to put into the story, which was super weird to me. I think they either should have had an androgynous voice do all of the extra inputs from other people's journals or other accounts of events, or they should have had a male one and a female one, because it was weird that Amberly wasn't reading those ones, but Kane was, or the, the voice actors were anyways. So this is the mess that is my office that you guys don't see. Fern Gully doesn't always live here because this guy does and this guy used to be on this wall but it fell down. You guys have seen this bookcase before. This window here gives me so much light that I think I want to move my desk in here. Those bookcases are going to go into the other room and I think my desk is gonna come out here. They're trying to figure out who assassinated this alien diplomat person and Amberly and her little assistant guy go off and get into trouble somewhere and Kane saves them from this thing and he he ends up having to go back in there with, with a crew of people and it ends up being the five people who he spared at the beginning of the novel. The book did a really good job of very quickly giving these five people some good characterization. Sorrel or Sorrel? I think his name was, was one of my favorites. He was just like super creepy. Two of the five of them were probably in love, which was interesting. And like, they did it in a very subtle way. And it was cool. Like, I, I quite liked their characterization. Brave Jurgen decides to go with Kane, Amberly, and these five other people into this like underground kind of hive city. And the whole idea of that is like cities get built on top of cities as they crumble and fall, but people are living in these hives and in, in, underground where cities have fallen to, which was a really cool idea. Idea. They're all down there trying to look for whoever assassinated this alien guy and they meet up with another group of aliens. I got kind of confused. This group of aliens, like I'm, I, I think that was the group that I was okay with. I mean, apart from the fact that they ate people probably isn't so cool. They had this whole like for the greater good motto that I'm, I, I don't understand it, but like it sounds, it sounds solid. They find this third group of aliens, which like hybrid themselves with different species. They have to make a quick getaway and then everybody died? 
Our little ragtag team of rebels died? I mean, they weren't really rebels, just like fighter people from the beginning. I'm pissed that they're all dead. I hope they're not all dead. I wanted to get to know them better. <laughs> Jurgen too. I'm so sad Jurgen is dead. That stinky dude, he was fun. But then, Jurgen is alive. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> Sorrel's alive. I'm so happy. <laughs> Sarl just got shot. I'm pissed. I liked him. He was creepy and I wanted to know more about him. Oh, you can see me over there. Hey. I'm also pissed that Amberly is the way she is. Okay, so this project has gone a little further than I, uh, I thought it would. Not too shabby, huh? Fringoli actually might get put up soon now that I have my other guy over here. All right, to wrap this up, um, I guess I was kind of bummed that those five characters all died. I feel like I would have really enjoyed getting to know them and their whole story more. I thought that could have been a cool a cool story. Uh, Jurgen survived, which I was really happy about, and overall this was a really enjoyable book. I think that Kane is a total schmuck and a total Gryffindor, you know? I mean, it was fun. I, I, I might read the next one. I think I would give this four out of five Harry Potter lightning bolts because the narration was great. I really enjoyed it. It would have been better, I think, with a fourth narrator. The story was weaved together quite well, and it really made me more interested in the world. So I, I, uh, I look forward to, to learning more about it. Anyways, until next time, may the Force be with you. Live long and prosper, and don't let the muggles get you down. Lachlan? Said a familiar voice behind me. I froze, and my heart started to pound in my chest. Lachlan, is that you? The Eastern European accent was gone, but then again, my accent was gone too. Well, for the most part. All the same, I would have known her voice anywhere. I turned slowly on the spot. Full lips broke into a smile that reached all the way to her bright brown eyes. Long dark hair cascaded over her shoulders. It was longer than the last time I'd seen her. That had been five years ago. Samila, I said.